family. My name is Vicki Dillard, and I'm so excited to be a contributor on this amazing African diaspora network. I do ask that as you come in, make sure that you like, that you share, that you subscribe, supporting this amazing network. Listen, I was so disturbed, family. Um, of course, many of you may have already heard and seen the footage of our dear brother, um, Ahmad Alberry from Georgia, who experienced right before our eyes a high tech lynching. A couple of um, white supremacists in Georgia gunned down our now 26 year old brother. We call it a high tech lynching because of the manner in which he was murdered. It was brutal, it was brute, it was unrelenting, it was unforgiving. It was disgusting. And two of the men, now it's believed to be three suspects, but two of the men, Gregory McMichael and his son, Travis McMichael, the elder, already being a former law enforcement official, having been a detective, I believe it was, and having direct connections with the prosecution that held on to the video that showed his murder. The prosecution held on to the, uh, the video for months now. We're just now recently seeing it. And now they finally arrested two of the three suspects. But we'll see what becomes of that. This is no time for us to be congratulating each other because who knows what will happen between now and then. But since the release of this leaked video that the DA had for months, we're now hearing from family and from friends of our brother Ahmad. And I'm careful to say his name because we want to say his name, we want to remember his name. Our brother, his friends, his family's coming out. Well, his friend, what some are saying, um, one news outlet, outlet uh, referred to him as his best friend, I'm saying his homeboy, came out. And as you will hear clearly, listen to this, specifically saying that his murder is not about race. He specifically said that this is not about black or white. Black family, especially our black men, black males, when you say such things, you are letting our open enemy off the hook. You are providing cover when you say this is not about race and this is not about black and white. Are you out of your mind? The reason why we're in the same condition that we've been in for hundreds of years is because of race and racism and white supremacy. It is high time for bootlicks, sambos, and mammies that love to defend the indefensible. You love to defend the individuals that shed blood, the shedders of blood. Those that go about the earth stealing, killing, and destroying. Who does that sound like? You always want to put your cape on and jump in front of them. And we wonder why we're still in the same conditions we're in when you are providing cover for them. Only a slave does stuff like that. Only a thoroughly entrenched Negro slave who's only concerned about the well-being of white folk trying to make sure they don't feel uncomfortable see that's the reason why black folks jump out and say stuff like that with the quickness oh it's not just about black and white we are family it's about the community including everybody it's not about race see you trying to make sure white folks don't feel uncomfortable when your whole preoccupation right now ought to be not their comfortability. 
but ours. How comfortable was our dear brother when he was taking those back-to-back -back bullets? <laughs> Talk black to me. How comfortable was Trayvon Martin when he was being hunted down like a dog? How comfortable was my sister Sandra Bland when we found out that she was all but hung in a jail after spending practically a weekend there under suspicious circumstances? How comfortable were our ancestors bearing the whip? How comfortable were they when they were strung up by a noose, hung in a tree, and set on fire? How comfortable was Emmett Till when he was practically decapitated? In a metal machine, basically, a gin of sorts was tied around his neck in order for him to drown in the bottom of the water. How comfortable were they when they were running for their lives? You've got to retrain yourself. And it's high time you start today. How many of you remember that the Mother Emmanuel Church some years ago when nine of our black brothers and sisters out of South Carolina endured being mowed down by a white supremacist race soldier by the name of Dylan Roof? Before our brother could even be buried properly, it seemed. Before his body could even be properly transported. His family at his bond hearing. Victims, family members were sitting there telling Dylan Roof, we forgive you, we forgive you, we forgive you. One of the ladies in the video footage said, not only did she forgive him, but she said, like we told you during the Bible study, we enjoyed you because you all know that Dylan Roof came in the midst of the people of God during a Bible study and mowed them down. And she recalls one of the ladies that survived apparently or who had direct access to this information. You hear her say, as a survivor, ostensibly say to Dylan Roof, like we told you during Bible study, we enjoyed you. What do you think you are signaling black family when you say such things? It is a misunderstanding and a misinterpretation of the scripture of forgiveness. How many of you all remember a story in scripture, if you wanna go there with the scripture in the New Testament, this is after the transition of the Jesus of 2000 years ago. One of the apostles said to a, a couple, Ananias and Sapphira, they lied about some funds that they received from a real estate deal and they dropped dead. This is after Jesus had ascended based on the rendering that many of you believe from 2000 years ago. Why didn't the disciples say, we forgive you, Ananias and Sapphira? No, they said that you're going to drop. They, you, they, they made it clear. You lied to the Holy Ghost and they dropped dead. Why didn't they intercede and say, we forgive you? How many of you all remember Jesus giving his disciples instructions at one time to go to the house of Israel? He gave them specific instructions, told them to heal the sick, cast out demons and do those kinds of things. But he said that if they don't listen to you, he said, dust, shake the dust off of your feet as a sign of the doom for that people. And he said, for some of them, it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it would be for those individuals that didn't listen to them. Why didn't Jesus say forgive them? No, he told his disciples to prophesy or to foretell doom. Why don't you all talk about that aspect of Jesus? The forgiveness needs to be between Black, the black family turning the other cheek needs to be about you having mercy and showing grace to your own 
because of the conditions that you have both been in. Only your open enemy will train you and teach you to forgive them. You know why they will teach you and train you to forgive them? So that they can have the advantage, Lord have mercy, over you to continuously defeat you. And so that you can participate in your own undoing. Somebody black talk black to me. Did you hear what I just said? For the longest times as those that were bound and in bondage, your open enemy, America in certain places didn't even let, it was illegal for you to read. They forbade you from accessing the Bible. So now that they decided to give you the Bible, don't you know that they've been tampering with it and that the interpretations of the truths that you read, they put their twist on it to keep you in bondage, to program you? It's time for you to properly recognize if your open enemy is not going to treat you right, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, then they're not going to teach you right. Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about this now because I want to nip this in the bud early. While we are at the beginning stages of this leaked video and the demand for justice now that we have found out that they finally arrested two of the suspects. And th this is a long way from justice, family. We still got a trial to deal with. Who knows if they're going to be um, uh, 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 bailing themselves out? Who knows what's going on with the third suspect and so forth? We know how they do so-called justice in America. But we want to shut this down right now. Anybody that would come out to show such weakness and to provide cover for our open enemy and for those that would murder and kill and slay and lynch us. We want to tell you stand down right now. When you are in the middle of a war, you do not display signals of weakness. Did you all hear what I just said? This is not the time for that. You can't be on the front line as a black man Showing all this kind of weakness. We can't afford that. And if you are scared, that's fine. Just close your mouth. Just stand down. And let the other ones take it from here. Let me say this to you. I was sharing this earlier today. The people that we are dealing with, the way in which they engage us, they treat us. They act other than human. What manner of man do you know, family, that chops off your body parts and keeps them as a souvenir? What manner of man do you know that chops off body parts and actually eats and ingests them? What manner of man do you know would open the womb of a black woman with an unborn child and take the skull of the unborn child and crush the heel, crush the skull rather of the unborn child with their heel? What manner of man do you know, black family, that would set an individual on fire, sodomize a man, and rape the woman repeatedly, destroy in that manner? We say no manner, no man at all would do that. No real man would do that. So if those that are our opponents, those that would try to destroy us and oppress us, are showing you signs of a beast and of a savage, I'm talking about the traits. That means you've got to stop engaging that individual the way you're used to engaging them because you've been losing doing it that way. I was sharing with somebody earlier today that when you're dealing even with a dog, they say that dogs can sense fear. They say dogs can smell fear, right? What do they tell you to do? They tell you not to do that, to calm down when a dog approaches you. Why? When you show weakness to a dog, does a dog stop pursuing you? Does a dog stop trying to attack you? No, that's, that incentivizes the dog to attack. So it is with your open enemy. When you show weakness, talking about how you don't believe in defending yourself and I forgive you and I'm just like you and I love you, you showing weakness 
to an individual that's not acting human, that's not going to have them show mercy on you. That's more incentive to attack you. That means you are showing yourself to be a soft target and your enemies love soft targets. So I'm saying in advance, shame on anybody that will come out with this kind of mindset. It's my prayer that Ahmad's family would come out forcefully to specifically call out white supremacy and racism. I'm told that his father used the word lynching and I hope they continue in that manner because you ain't going to get nowhere like that family showing weakness in the middle of a war. My name is Vicki Dillard. Again, so proud to be a contributor here on African Diaspora News Channel. Thank you so much for sharing this podcast. Please be sure to subscribe to my personal YouTube channel at uh, Miss Vicki tv.com that's my website rather miss vicky tv.com is my website but my personal youtube channel is vicky dillard.tv and follow me on instagram at vicky x dillard vicky x dillard and follow me on twitter at dillard vicky my last name first the link should be in the description box thank you so much i love you i came to you in peace and i leave you in peace